question. You also have a question? Yes. Ask and the question. It concerns me as a young person because I talk to fellow young people and uh, some of them, they have this mentality that um, our modern day church is corrupt. So they want to they want to have me believe with them that it's possible to have a relationship with God without you having a place to fellowship, a place to call church that you attend to, maybe once in a while. And so this concept of having to attend church for you to be said to have a relationship with God, how true or untrue is it? Okay. Uh, where do we begin? As a, again, what is the church? So we, we, are, we are looking at what is happening in uh, different meetings, in different buildings, and we are calling it the church. Uh, they may not be, that may not be the church at all at all. You know what is keeping young people out of the church, what you're calling the church, is uh, witchcraft. People who used to be in shrines, or who should be in shrines, they discovered that you, uh, someone with a suit will not go to the shrine. So they have come and built beautiful buildings, and they have called that the church. And you go there, they tell you your, your mother's name, your aunties, I don't know, things. Uh, things that even Satan can do. They go there, you go there, and they sell you oil, they sell you handkerchiefs, they sell you water, they sell you a lot of paraphernalia of witchcraft. And these things don't, don't, don't resonate with anybody who is a thinker. If you're a thinker, how, do you, how will you understand that water will, will, will wipe away demons and do something in your life? You must be so daft to go do that. So all these things, they are the ones that are now keeping people who can reason out of the church because they don't make sense to them. But the gospel makes sense. The Bible says that the gospel is the power of God unto salvation for everyone who believes. It was first presented to the Jews and now it's presented to us. So the gospel makes sense both the simple and to the uh, educated uh, both to the rich and to the poor. The gospel cuts across the entire human race. The gospel is the equalizer. Now what the young people need to understand, you don't have to belong to any specific grouping for you to have a relationship with God. You don't. And let me explain it. The Bible says that Christ came to his own, but his own received him not. But unto everyone who received him, even those who believed in his name, he gave them the right to become children of God. So the moment they become children of God, you already have a relationship with God. And the Spirit of God in us testifies to us that we are children of God. According to Romans chapter 8, uh, verse 16 there, 17 there. The Spirit of God in us testifies to us that by being children of God, we have eternal life. According to 1 John chapter 5, Verse 9 to verse 12 there. We have the, we have, we have the uh, we, we have the eternal life. So the Spirit of God in us, the presence of the Spirit of God in us is the one that testifies to us of who we are. But at the point you put your personal faith in the finished work of Christ at the cross, at the point you rely on Christ and Christ alone for your salvation, at the point you believe of Christ was meant to pay for your penalty of sins and if you believe in him to, you will be reconciled back to God. At that very moment, you have an eternal and reversible relationship with God. That's good. But the question we need to be asking ourselves, why is God saving us? The, 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 there's a lot of emphasis on going to heaven and going to heaven and going to heaven. If God was saving us so that we can go to heaven, the very moment you get saved, he'll rapture you or you'll die and go to heaven because those are the only two ways that take you to heaven. But God has saved you so that he can again in turn send you here on earth as his ambassador to represent him here, to, 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 to preach or proclaim the message of reconciliation to others. 
to uh, to serve him in different capacities here and for us to serve him he has he has, he has uniquely given each and everybody a spiritual gift according to first corinthians chapter 12 and uh, romans chapter 12 also and even uh, ephesians chapter 4 god has given us spiritual gifts these spiritual gifts in the wisdom of god they serve one another if you uh, search your Bible for one another, it will amaze you that there's so much that we need to do for one another. It will be amazing. So, for example, if God has given you a particular gift, that gift you cannot serve yourself. You must come and serve me. And the gift I have, I must serve you. And therefore, we keep serving each other. So, as we function in our areas of gifts, then we discover that we need to congregate together and, and, uh, and serve God together, worship him together, and serve him together. That's the reason why we come together. Because we have different spiritual gifts for serving each other. The best example will be for your eye. Does your eye need the body to be an eye? Does your hand need your body to be a hand? No, it's still a hand on its own. But it can never function minus the rest of the body. And... Uh, 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 when you are walking on the road, the eye is seeing the road, saying that there's a rock here, jump, there's a ditch here, jump, pass here, there, there's mud here. And the eye will never be proud eh, that it's me who saw for you to, to not be hit. The eye is, <coughs> sorry, the eye is uh, <coughs> happy to participate in the, uh, the activities of the whole entire body. When you eat and you, your mouth is enjoying food, the mouth will never boast to the rest of the body. That's vitamins I'm the one who gave you. No, the mouth is happy to chew food and send nutrients in every area of the body. So, <coughs> forgive me. So, what, what, what needs to be done is to understand the reason why we come together as a local assembly is because we need to serve God by serving one another and by exercising our gifts and worshiping him together. So there's a place of a relationship with God, which is individual, and there's a place of corporate worship and corporate service unto God. We are ambassadors. And when we come together and we love each other, then the world knows that the love of God is in us. I think in relation to what you're saying about uh, whether to attend church or not, if we have the 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 perspective of church as a family. Because uh, we say salvation is being born again into the family of God. We are one body. So when we are a family, it means we, we, are, we are related. We are having a fellowship. And that makes us grow. Imagine if you are... Uh, a family and you're living alone, you've decided, I do not want to be with my sisters and brothers, my, I don't want to be with my father and my mother. There, it, there, there's a lot that you miss. If you are a baby, who will cook for you? If you, are, if you need a brother or bigger sister. So there's the aspect of the family setup that we need even as a, the children of God. Because then we, we are able to minister uh, to one another with the gifts that we have been given by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. As, as she makes reference to family, this must always come up in your mind. This must always be understood. You see, in Adam, you we are physically born in the family of Adam. In Christ, we are spiritually born in the family of Christ. So both families need a birth. You belong to each family through a process of birth. One of them is physical, one of them is spiritual. And that's what Christ was trying to explain to Nicodemus in John chapter 3 from verse 1 to verse uh, 14. And uh, Nicodemus could not even understand because he was wondering how can I be born again at this age. But this is a spiritual process spiritual process. So they are both family, you either belong to the family of God or the family of Adam, but both of them, they take birth for you to belong to them. One of them is physical, another one is spiritual. Yeah. 